Sunday School students and welcome to Sunday School Online. I'm your teacher for this session, Deaconess Robin Miller, and I come to you by way of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church located in Cincinnati, Ohio, in the community of Northside, where our pastor is Bishop James Chapman, our First Lady, Lady Robin Chapman, and where we proudly proclaim as a church family, there is a God in Bethlehem, and Jesus is his name. As is my custom, I'm going to go ahead over announcements while people are coming into class and settling their feet. Please remember that we have additional Sunday school classes on our GB. TAC Cincinnati YouTube channel. You have Sister Casey Fisher taking our children on an adventure. Sister Tere Deloach putting something on our students' mind. We have videos for our teens challenging them to apply the Word of God to today's culture, making sure that right is right, and not just legal is right, but lining up with God and His Word. Along with that, students, we have a adult classes that take place every Sunday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. as the Lord allows on our G or excuse me on our telechurch platform. Please go to our gbtac.org website to get that telephone number and access code. While you are there, please get two other telephone numbers. One, our prayer line. Our pastors are waiting to pray with you. You are not in this alone. Please feel free to call them with a prayer request or to talk to them about the plan of salvation. They are here to outstretch the hands, the arms, the love of Jesus to you. Our other telephone number is our office telephone number. Get our office telephone number if you've been stopping by the temple. If you consider yourself a virtual member, make an appointment. Speak with our pastor, Bishop Chapman. Introduce yourself. Allow him to introduce himself to you. And let me be the first to say welcome to the family. Please remember to like to subscribe and this is your cordial invitation to attend other services that are going on at the temple we have our live worship experience every sunday morning as the lord allows at 11 o'clock a.m and remember we are back to in-person services yes we are following covid practices so that we're keeping one another safe with hand sanitization masks and also social distancing and you are are welcome to join us in the temple in person or virtually by joining us on our virtual platforms Instagram Facebook YouTube and also from our website gbtac.org remember Excuse me, the Bible class also takes place every Tuesday night as the Lord allows at 7 o'clock p.m. Do not deprive yourself of the word. Remember to join us. So it is time for review. Last week, we talked about God calls Isaiah. One of our conclusion points was that God has a purpose for all his creation. In that purpose, we do things differently, including praising and worshiping him. The seraphims are angels that are before the throne of God, continually crying out, holy, holy, holy. Isaiah was in heaven and saw the holiness of God and his surroundings. He looked at himself and he saw he was not holy and cried out, prayed to God about his situation, and he was made holy to God. God loves us and sends us direction and correction when we need it. Isaiah accepted the call or assignment from God to be sent as his messenger to speak to his God's people. 
So you know what I am going to say. Ha 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 ha. We're about to go over our homework. So homework was to read ahead for next week's lesson and to find in the Bible specifically the Old Testament, a scripture passage, and that was to include book, chapter, and verse that spoke of God's character or his attributes. I gave you the option to search for the ones that I had already provided, or you can look for another. I asked for just one. So these are passages for the ones that I had already provided. Omniscient, omnipotent, ha 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 ha. Last time I had trouble with that word. I have it this time, omnipotent, which means all powerful. Omnibenevolent, supremely good. And you will notice that I said Old Testament, so you'll see that these scripture passages are found in Psalms, in the book of Isaiah, and um, the last one being for Samuel. So all of these go along with the attributes or the characteristics of God that I listed last week. You may have some different ones because God is not, his attribute isn't just mentioned one time. So you may have different passages and that's fine. You may also have listed different attributes. So I went ahead and, and listed some other attributes. I did not provide this scripture passage that was for you to find, but I listed some other attributes that you may have come up with. And that was perfect, eternal spirit, creator of all, a sustainer or provider. God is trustworthy. He is a deliverer. And of course, he is wise. So again, this is not an exhaustive listing. You may have something more. You may have something different and that's fine as long as you did your homework. And if you did your homework, you know what that makes you to me. Woo! You are my homework hero. Thank you for being a part of the Homework Hero Squad. Now, if you did not do your homework, here's your opportunity. You can be a part of the Homework Hero Squad. Please remember to do your homework. It makes such a difference for you learning the word, hiding the word, having the word of God for yourself. So this week we are talking about Ace of Cries Out to God. Our lesson text is the book of Psalms, chapter, excuse me, chapter 73, verses 1 through 3, verses 12 through 13, verses 16 through 18, and 21 through 26. With the golden text being Psalms, or the focus first, being Psalms chapter 73, verse 26. The purpose, the aim, the reason why we're looking at this lesson is to see that it is rather foolish to envy the prosperity of the ungodly. We're going to look at how we can understand that we should put our trust in God for his eternal care and keeping our eyes on Christ. So foolish defined using a Google.com search uh, under kid friendly meant unwise or silly, resulting from folly or stupidity, ridiculous or absurd, not worthy of consideration. And one thing that I want you to do is while I'm looking at the definition of foolish, take a look at the picture that I chose to illustrate the word foolish. This young man sitting on a branch and he's doing something that's necessary. He's cutting off the branch, but he's sitting on the very branch that he needs to cut off. And we can see that he's about to bring himself by his own actions to unnecessary harm through foolish, meaning unwise or silly actions. Additionally, foolish from the merriamwebster.com website defined 
meant having or showing a lack of good sense, judgment, or discretion. Now, the writer or Asaph in our lesson today, he described his behavior as foolish for looking at and being envious, meaning he wanted the things that he saw. He wanted those things also for himself and he used that word foolish remember it means unwise so just to be clear it isn't bad or wrong or evil to want nice things or even to appreciate the things that we see you might like cars and if you see a Maserati go down the street if you see a muscle car you may look at it and appreciate it and think you know what I would like to have one like that one day or you know what that looks really good I'm going to work hard so that I can earn enough money to buy one for myself one day that is not wrong the sinful or the wrong behavior happens when we put things before or ahead of God then we too can be like the writer and we would have to describe our behavior as being foolish or unwise the Bible tells us to seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness all other things the things that we have need of will be added or provided to us in the Amplified Version, it says, but first and most importantly, seek, meaning to aim at, strive after his, capital H, which is God, kingdom, and his, capital H, which is God, righteousness. And his righteousness is explained as his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God. And all these things will be given to you also. Now the context of the scripture that I just read, Jesus was talking about being worried, being anxious, being concerned about basic needs. However, we can live that principle, that same truth of seeking and making God first from this passage. So go ahead. It's okay. Study your school lessons. Get involved in your academic pursuits. Jump into your job duties or position yourself for advancement. And it's okay to do all of these things diligently. But along with those actions, along with that behavior, remember to give God that same enthusiasm, that same passion, that same time and interest in your relationship with him, in communing with him, in learning about him. The same way that we give our tithe, we trust him, meaning God, to bless us when we honor him. So let's look at a little bit of what's going on. Who is Asaph? He was a Levite, a musician, a prophet, a poet. Wow, he was busy. He was a lot of things. And he began to dwell on the good, or excuse me, on the good life experienced by the wicked. Now, we know when we dwell on, it means that we're meditating, that we're thinking on, that we're having these thoughts going on in our mind, and we're just chewing them up and going through them. His thought process had him grieved because he saw the prosperity of the wicked and compared the situations of the righteous and the wicked as he saw it and I want to underscore that as he saw it he saw that the righteous they had a clean heart whereas the wicked they were ungodly the righteous they received the goodness of the Lord but the wicked, they seem to increase in riches. He saw their prosperity in spite of the righteous living godly and doing right by God. It is unwise to make judgments with limited information. And that's what we saw with Asaph today, or that's what we're seeing with Asaph today in our lesson. He based his judgment on the surface, what it looked like instead of what God had given to him by way of information or impartation. God is the only one who sees 
all things, the condition, the intent of the heart, our motivations, the person's whole entire situation from beginning to middle and end. Only God sees us perfectly and only God can judge justly unless we are judging according or by God's word. In our golden text, Psalm chapter 73, verse 26, the King James Version, it reads, my flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. In the Living Bible, it reads this way, my health fails, my spirit droops, yet God remains. He is the strength of my heart. He is mine forever. The natural things fade, but God's strength doesn't stop. It never fades. It never runs out. We can always go to him. We understand that we are finite. Our actions are finite, meaning that they have a beginning and an end and that they run out. But God's strength, God's wisdom, God's everything. It is bottomless. It is limitless. It is infinite. And we can go to him for our strength. That is what makes an unwise person wise, leaning on God for their strength. Now, in Psalms chapter 27, verses 13 through 14, there was a similar situation in which the writer was looking at others instead of keeping his eyes on God. And he had a very honest moment that he shares with us, the audience. He said, I had fainted. I would have given up and let go unless I had believed, trusted, determined, and held on to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, in my right now, understanding that God is blessing me where I am and knowing that he's going to bless me when I am with him, but yet he's blessing me right now. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. In other words, keep our eyes on Christ and not on the things around us. We can get caught up with seeing other people's things and stuff, thinking that we're being mistreated, thinking that we're not being given what's due us, even though we are Christians, even though we are children of God. Why don't we have that? We are kings and priests. Why don't we have that? We are princes and princesses in the kingdom of God. Why don't we have that? Why don't we prosper? And in that mindset, we can believe that God is doing us wrong. But when we put our eyes, our focus, our direction back on God, we see that he blesses us immensely. And we also realize the truth that these things, prosperity, and if that's the only thing, that is making a person happy, it is fleeting. It will fade. And also, if they are ungodly, there is a price that will be paid if they do not accept God's free gift of salvation. So we forget just how blessed we are when we look and take our eyes off Christ and look at other things. So again, in Psalms chapter uh, 27 verses 13 through 14, I wanted to share this illustration to go along with the scripture. This gentleman is holding on for dear life. And if he looks down and changes his focus, he could change his outcome. But if he continues to look at his destination, keep his eyes on what the older people used to say, keep the main thing, the main thing. In other words, keep the actual focus of what you need to do out in front of you and don't look at the distractions around you. You are going to make it to where you need to be with Christ leading you. So in our conclusion, Asaph 
Asaph looked at the wicked and became envious of them. He described his behavior as foolish for looking at and being envious, wanting another one's things for himself, the things that he saw. It is unwise to make judgments with limited information. God is the only one who sees all things, the condition and intent of the heart, their motivations, the person's whole entire situation. It isn't bad or evil to want nice things. It is when we put things before or ahead of God that we too have behaved foolishly. So for homework, you are to read ahead for next week's lesson. And the Bible tells us to seek God's kingdom first and his righteousness. Find the scripture reference for this statement. And again, that would be book, chapter, and verse of where it could be found. And I want you to do some self-reflection answer this question for yourself. Like Asaph, what things do you see with other people and wanted until you realize that God was taking care of you? Now, that's not something that you have to turn into me. It isn't something that you have to share, just something that I want you to look at for yourself and have a conversation with God about. Next week, we're going to be discussing godly leaders serve. Our lesson text will be Ezra chapter 6 verses 13 through th excuse me 13 through 22. I got a little tongue tied there. And our golden text will be Ezra chapter 6 verse 14. And I want to wish all of you dads a happy Father's Day. Specifically, also, I wish my dad, Robert Miller, a happy Father's Day. Yay! This is also a part of your homework, students. Remember what we talked about on Mother's Day. It's not just the gifts that you buy, but the most important the most precious gifts are intangible and that is your time so please remember to spend some of your time with your dad in person on the phone on text or in thought honoring the memory of your dad so again to my dad happy father's day to all of you dads out there happy father's day Specifically, I wish the father of the Greater Bethlehem Temple Apostolic Church, father not founder, please don't confuse me, <laughs> a happy Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, Bishop. So for my final word, I want to wish all of you a happy Juneteenth day. It is actually today, June the 19th. Many people will be celebrating it for the entire weekend and also on Monday where it is federally or observed by the state on Monday, June the 20th, but today is the actual day. So I wish you a happy Juneteenth day day. Please reflect on what this means to not just us as a people, not just us as a culture, but to all of our country. And lastly, it is that time again, Vacation Bible School. You are invited to the GBTAC Vacation Bible School. Block it out on your calendar, hold the date. It is going to be virtual this year. For the students, it's going to be July the 7th through the 8th, 2022. For our adult classes, it's actually going to be the day after July the 4th. So it will be June the 5th through June the 8th for the adult classes. But for student classes, it will be July the 7th through the 8th. The time will be nightly, 7 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. Who's invited? All of you are invited and all of those ones that you spread the word to. Don't forget about Vacation Bible School. And again, the platform will be virtual. So please meet us back here on July the 7th on our YouTube channel, Adults. Your class will be taking place where it always takes place on our Telechurch format. Please visit our website gbtac.org to get that information.
Thank you for having joined me for Sunday School Online today. Please join me again next time, same time, same channel. Invite your family, invite your friends to join you where we will gather around the Word of God and do it again as the Lord allows. I leave you with my borrowed saying from Veggie Tales: God made you special and he loves you very much. Have a great day. Make it a great day. Bye.